Okay, Algebra Part 1. Uh, Algebra 1 Part A, people. This is uh, the review for chapter... Or for test 5, I should say. I'm trying to flip the thing up so I can actually use the board. Otherwise, this thing's going to be uh, not working. So I'm going to do uh, about 10 problems. I tried to pick problems that I thought were closely related to all the problem types. So at least I cover mostly everything. If I miss something, my apologies. But this should cover pretty much everything that you need. The first one that I'm going to do is number 2. And I'm going to minimize out this thing just a little bit. Try to zoom out. There we go. Now, for this one, uh, the key is that it's a an inequality, first off. So when I write it down, I have to pay close attention to make sure that I have everything copied over properly because you're not going to have a bunch of space to do it right underneath it because you'll have the answer choices, but shouldn't be a big deal. So um, we're going to go from here. I'm going to draw the line of course. Now, in order to get rid of this divide by 2 that's dividing everything on, on top of the uh, fraction, I need to multiply by 2. So I get negative 11 times 2 is negative 22. I'm going to bring down everything that was on the top there, so negative 7 plus x. Now my big deal is to get x by itself, so I need to get rid of plus x, so I'm going to uh, minus 7, so I'm going to add 7. Now, this is plus 7. But even if it was minus 7, I still would not flip that inequality because we're not doing a multiply or a divide in the last step. You only flip if you multiply or divide in the last step by a negative, and you're not doing that here. So we're going to keep this inequality the same. And negative 22 plus 7 gives me negative 15. So I'm going to look for this answer, and as you can see, both D and B have that in it. The thing you're going to have to be careful with today is to make sure that you um, pick the one that the graph matches. So if I, were to draw, if I was to draw the graph, I'd go down to negative 15. I would circle it. The key here is it has the line underneath. So I do need to fill in from there. And x is less than goes this way. So the answer choice that I need to choose is B. Not a really difficult problem, you know, something that you could do. Just make sure that you pay attention to both the graph and the uh, number itself. You don't want to make a mistake and miss something that's really easy to get right. The next one I'm going to do is number three. This is another inequality question. There's a bunch of them on this test. And I'm going to change the color a little bit because that one's a little light for the paper I'm writing on. So I have one is greater than n over 2 minus 2. I need to draw my line. n is here. The friend of friend is minus 2, so I'm going to add 2. n divided by 2. In this uh, case, all I'm going to do is get rid of the divide by 2, so I need to multiply by 2. I'm going to circle this to remind myself to look to see if I need to flip that inequality over. 3 times 2 is, of course, 6. Um, I do not need to flip it over because this is a positive 2. So it looks like that. In this case, I'm going to go to 6. Uh, I'm going to circle it. I do not need to uh, fill it in because there's no underline underneath that uh, greater than, less than sign there. So instead, I'm going to draw the line. And n is next to the little n, so I'm going to draw it to the left because little is left. So I'm going to go over and look for the answer choice. And it's A. Not really that big of a deal. You didn't have to make a lot of choices in terms of anything other than the number on that one, but sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. The next one I'm going to look at is number six. I have them written on the board in case you're wondering why I have like a stutter moment every time I bring one up. Uh, for this one, I'm just going to, this is an absolute value question. This is a really advanced absolute value question. Write it all down here. Now, the issue here is I need to get the absolute value by itself before I split it into two problems. So to do that, I just treat it like, uh, almost like the absolute value stuff is a variable. I need to get rid of this plus 8 first, so I'm going to subtract 8. So I get 9 times the quantity 4k minus 10, which is an absolute value. And this becomes 90. Then I need to get rid of times 9, so I'm going to divide both sides by 9. do 10 here. Now, at this point, I need to do my split because I have the absolute value all by itself. So I'm going to write one statement 
showing that the car knew what it's talking about or that I'm just going to keep it. And I'm going to write another statement down below it or off to the side here. is equal to negative 10. So I'm just going to solve these. Add 10 here. And I get plus 10. So this becomes 20. Divide by 4. K is equal to 5. So that's one of my answers. On the other one, I'm going to add 10. When I add 10 to negative 10, that gives me 0. I'm going to divide by 4. So k is also equal to 0, so my little bracket set, my braces, should have 0 and 5 in them, or 5 and 0, either way. So the answer to number 6 is just A. It looks like a really long problem. It's not super difficult. The key is just to get the uh, absolute value by itself before you start breaking it off into two separate problems. The next one I'm going to look at is number 8. This is another one of those ridiculously long absolute value questions. They're not ridiculously long, they're just pretty long. I did a capital A because my lowercase a's tend to look like nines and there's a lot of nines in this. So I need to split it off before I can break it in parts. The thing I'm going to get rid of first is this minus 9, because this 3 is multiplied by the whole absolute value. So I need to add 9 to both sides. I'm going to bring down this absolute value business. I get 33. Then I need to get, to get the absolute value by itself, I need to divide by 3 here. Well, 33 divided by 3 is 11. So now I can go ahead and split it into two problems. The first problem is going to say negative 9 minus 2a is equal to 11. The other problem is going to say negative 9 minus 2a is equal to negative 11. So I'm just going to solve both problems. Draw your line, add 9 to both sides. Add it to positive 11, you get 20. Divide by negative 2, a is equal to negative 10 in that situation. On the other side, I'm going to add 9. 9 added to negative 11 gives you negative 2. Divide by negative 2 in this step, and a is equal to 1. So the numbers I'm looking at are 1 and negative 10, so my answer should be e for number 8. So the real key to doing the absolute value ones is to work them to the point where you just have an absolute value equals a constant, and then separate it into two problems. No big deal. Uh, let's look at number 9. We're actually going to do a bunch in a row, 9, 10, and 11. So you shouldn't have to move too much if you have your review paper right, right nearby. Uh, for this one, another one of those longer absolute value questions. I'm going to do this one in gray. I don't know why. So the absolute value of 3 plus 3x plus 9 equals 42. This one's pretty quick before we can s we have to split it. I just need to subtract 9. I get 3 plus 3x three is equal to 33. So I'm going to break it off into two problems. The first one goes over here. 3 plus 3x three equals 33. And on the other side, I do 3 plus 3x three equals negative 33. Draw the line, subtract 3 from both sides. That's supposed to be 3x. I don't know why I had a 6 there. Sorry about that. I think I was thinking of the other side of the problem. Uh, so I'm going to divide by 3 here. x is equal to 10. On the flip side, I get negative 36. Divide by 3 x is equal to negative 12. So I just find the one that has both those numbers in it, 10 and negative 12. It's right there. So number 9 should be D. Unless I missed it. Let me check. Nope. I'm right. Number 10. Number 10 is another absolute value question. There's a bunch of them on this test. 
just so you know, in case you didn't notice by looking at the review itself. n plus 3, and the absolute value is all on top, over 8 equals 1. So in this situation, I have an absolute value on top of a uh, the denominator, of which is really divide by 8. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and multiply both sides by 8. 1 times 8 is 8. So now I can just split this problem into two parts. I do n plus 3 equals 8, and n plus 3 equals negative 8. Draw your line. Subtract 3 here. n equals 5. Subtract 3 here n equals negative 11. So I'm going to look for an answer that has negative 11 and 5 in it, which is B. No super big deal there, I don't think. There it is, to prove that that was the answer. Uh, now I'm going to look at number 11. Another absolute value one. I'm beating these to death, I guess. And convert this into... Uh, a useful form. Write it over here. Now in this situation, before I can split, I need to get rid of that times negative 2. To do that, I'm going to divide by negative 2. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1. So I'm left with this problem. So now that it's just an absolute value equals a constant, I can split. Equals 1 equals negative 1, and then I just need to solve them. Minus 9 divided by 2. On the flip side, I'm going to subtract 9 x is equal to negative 5. So I'm going to look for one that has negative 4 and 5 in it, so that would be a for number 11. Make sure I got it right. Yeah, so it's really simple. You, anytime you have an absolute value that's not all by itself already, you just need to do the math to get the absolute value equal to some constant term, or a number term, or whatever you want to call it. Now I'm going to skip to number 16. I've got three more to do on this review, and then you're on your way. 16 is really not that difficult. I think people got freaked out by this type of question during the week, so I did want to cover it. People had no idea what to do on this one. It's really not as complicated as you think. If I look at the right side of this equation as 9 sevenths, or as a fraction, as opposed to 9 divided by 7, my life becomes much easier. So what I'm going to do here is just think, what do I need to do to get b by itself? Well, b is divided by 14, so I need to multiply by 14. And this is an inequality, so I'm going to remember that since this is a positive 14, I'm not going to flip that inequality over. On, in your calculator, just type in 9 over 7 as a fraction, and then multiply it by 14, and you'll get 18. So b is greater than 18, so I would go on the number line, go to 18, I'd circle it. Uh, there's no line underneath, so this is just a greater than, so I don't need to fill it in. And since b is next to the big end, that would be greater than, so it goes to the right. I'm going to look for that, and it is C. So it wasn't really a difficult problem, that one. It was just the fact that during the week, we had a lot, oh, we had, a, I think, one or two that were just like it, and it really messed with some people, so a lot of people didn't get it. Now I'm going to go to number 26. Here it is. Just a really sort of longer um, solving equations question. At least you don't have to worry about the idea of whether or not you flip the inequality over, because there isn't one here. This is a equation question. Now, I'm going to draw my line. Baby goes bathroom. Baby goes bathroom again. This kid has to go to the bathroom a lot. Now I'm going to clean my room. I'm going to combine like terms. So my like terms here would be here. Negative 24 plus 36 should give you 12m. And then my um, 
integer terms, or the number terms, if you want to call them that, that I need to combine together would be negative 18 plus 42. It gives you positive 24. Bring this down. Now I need to move my variable terms because we're at pork chops and applesauce. In order to get rid of plus 12, I need to subtract 12. These cancel, so do these. It says negative 5 is equal to 24. If this is true, then the answer is identity. If it is not, it is no solution. That is not true. That is a lie. So this is a no solution question. So the answer that I pick is C. Remember, if you eliminate the variable term, just look to see if the statement is true or not. If it is true, it's all real numbers or identity, and if it's not, it would be a lie, so the answer is no solution. To prove that's what the answer is, um, the last one I'm going to do is number 33. Another solving uh, equations question. Shouldn't be too difficult to do at this point. Draw my line. Baby goes to the bathroom. I'm going to uh, pork chops and applesauce this thing, so I'm going to move over my minus 7x by adding 7x. Those cancel. Bring down minus 35. Bring down negative 7. Bring down uh, minus 14. Then I need to this is parties over, so friend to friend will be minus 7, so I'm going to add 7. Negative 14x uh, equals minus 28, I think. Divide by negative 14. x is equal to 2. So I'm going to say that the answer to number 33 is C. It's kind of nice that you've gotten to the point that I can move through that question so quickly as where in the first videos it took me forever to do a question like that. And that is the answer. So on the test, just make sure you take your time, write things down so you can see them, especially when you do the inequalities. If you multiply or divide those in the last step, make sure you flip the inequality over and always read the inequality based on the variable and not on the number. And I think things will go really well for you. So good luck on the test tomorrow and uh, I'll see you at school.